Good evening. Good evening. Do I have this on? Is it on? Okay, thank you. Sheldon, right? Yep. Yes, thank you for that. I'm Mark Richardson, one of the pastors at Christ the King in Hutchinson. And just so happy to be with you. I know Pastor Steve Alcott was with you last week. He's another pastor on our staff. Uh, pastor Brian Nearing uh, is not part of the round robin. He's playing home base throughout Lent, but uh, he's our third pastor, and hopefully you'll get a chance to meet him as well. Uh, uh, pastor Steve is the short one. Pastor Brian is like this, great big farm boy from Wisconsin, um, uh, who is not a Packers fan. Otherwise, I'm not sure we would have called him. But uh, he's a Vikings fan and a uh, big boy, and uh, then I'm the guy in the middle, like that. So uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves to you and uh, are so happy that you have become part of our family of faith in the Augustana District of LCMC and in our neighborhood as well. Uh, are there any announcements that we need to make in terms of the parish, a church announcements or anything like that? Good. Okay, then uh, let us begin our worship. Will you please rise as we sing the first hymn? We gather this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The third article of the Apostles' Creed professes our beliefs about the Holy Spirit and the Church. The small catechism teaches, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the Gospel enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and preserved me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and preserves it in unity with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily forgives abundantly all my sins and the sins of all believers. And at the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and will grant everlasting life to me and all who believe in Christ. This is most certainly true. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together.
Gracious Heavenly Father, using the Word of God, the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and preserves us in true faith. Flood us with the Holy Spirit so that our lives would be filled with true and vibrant faith, binding us together and to you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Do you share God's peace with each other? Please do so. And you may be seated. We'll continue with the reading of Scripture. Good evening. The seraph touched, excuse me, I'll start again here. From Isaiah chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me the word of the Lord. From Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing, threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and through his eyes were open. He could see nothing, so they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Will you please rise for the reading of the Gospel? According to St. Matthew in chapter 4, beginning with verse 18. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not the Lord's way to sit around and wait for people to make some sort of decision as to whether or not they believe in Him or whether or not they will follow Him. This is not His way. We see this throughout the whole of Scripture. 
The Lord calls a fellow named Abraham and tells him to leave his home in Haran, in modern-day eastern Turkey, and go to the land that I will show you. And Abraham went. What choice did he have? From his offspring, the Lord chose a whole nation of people that he called the chosen people. What choice did they have? The Lord appears to Moses in a burning bush that was not being consumed by the flames. And in spite of Moses' objections to him, the Lord sent Moses to the Pharaoh to free his enslaved people there and to lead them home to the promised land. What choice did Moses have? The Lord called Joshua, Deborah, a long-haired strong man named Samson, a prophet named Samuel, kings named Saul, David, and Solomon. He called the prophet Isaiah and said, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I, Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. How could he say otherwise? And the Lord commanded another man, Jeremiah, Do not say I am only a boy. You shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Who could resist? On and on it goes. The Lord Almighty of heaven and earth calls. What choice does anyone have except to bow in humble obedience and go to believe and to do what you're told? And then along comes Jesus. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He says to two startled fishermen. And they did. Immediately. They dropped their nets and followed Him right then and there. And when this Jesus of ours when His work was done on earth, when the effects of what He accomplished on a cross and in an empty tomb, the effects of His work, the spillover of His mighty deeds started growing and growing like corn stalks on a hot muggy day in July. The new small but quickly growing organization we have come to know as the Christian church was spreading the Word in spite of hardship, in spite of persecutions, being arrested, being beaten, and even stoned to death, like the first Christian martyr Stephen, the risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ calls then a villain, an enemy named Saul, soon to become Paul. That is what he did. He called him of all people with a blaring voice, and blinding lights that blinded him and sent him then, this blind, now blinded man, sent him off to Damascus to a man named Ananias who then cured his blindness, not only the blindness of his eyes, but also the blindness inside his soul. He discipled him. Ananias did, discipled Paul, taught Paul, trained Paul, and Paul became the voice of the gospel to the whole of the ancient world and the writer of half the New Testament. What choice did he have? And how about you? The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and preserves the whole Christian church on earth, Martin Luther wrote in the small catechism. The Holy Spirit gathers up all those whom the Lord has called and puts them into a community, a gathering of people called the Christian church, scoops them up, bucket loads of them, thousands of them, even millions. And how about you? About five years ago, I think that's when it was, my wife Luann and I saw an ad in the paper for puppies. 
And we drove to a place out in the country, uh, somewhere between Silver Lake and Cocado. I don't think I could find the place if we ever had to go back there again. And we found there the litter of puppies. Mom was a very big, very tired-looking, worn-out black lab. I was weary of the demanding, can we call them selfish little puppies that were around her all of the time. And dad was a small, old uh, uh, Springer Spaniel who was barely able to walk anymore, that old guy. And some of the puppies looked like dad, Springer Spaniels, and some of them looked like mom, small black labs, and all of them were just mutts. No grand champions in this batch, I'll tell you. No dog of the year awards to be won. But they bounced and played together, loving the life they had been given. And we saw one that we liked. A little black one that looked kind of like her mom, except the ears had long black hairs hanging from them like a Springer Spaniel. And we squatted down and clapped our hands and said, Come! Come! And this little puppy bounced over to us in, in, in joy, looking for playful love. And we took her home. And we named her Molly. And aside from the sins that she inevitably commits from time to time, she has been a blessing to us and our family. What choice did she have? And what about you? Because it's not the way of the Lord to stand around with his hand on his chin and wait and see what the puppies will do and who will come to him. No, clearly, over and over and over again in the Scriptures, we can see and hear him calling, choosing, electing, his own people. The Virgin Mary, how about her? John the Baptist, how about him? They chose God, we want to say? Really? No, what choice did they have? They were called. And it is the same with you. Likely, for many of you, and at a time when all you could do was to blurp up mama's milk and shoot out its leftovers like stinger missiles into your diapers, in the font right here, in this place, or somewhere else, he picked you out of the litter and said, you're coming with me. You belong to me now. You're mine. He washed the slime right off your mortality. And more importantly, He washed the slime off your heart. He gave you a new name that would last for eternity. Child of God. And He gave you a purpose for even existing on this planet. Come, follow me. If you want to be a moron and wander away from me like the prodigal son, I'll be waiting for you to come to your senses. I'll call you again and again, he says, and again as I did through the prophet Joel. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. What choice do you have, my friends? You are his. This was his doing. And he thrusts you into a family, a community of mutts called the church. All of them precious. All of them loved. All of them called to care for one another and to care for a world that is smothered with lost puppies, lost souls, desperate to hear the voice of Jesus. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to Him. What choice do you have? Amen. Please let us stand together and confess our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, through your word and holy sacraments, you call us to be yours. And you call us in such a way that we have no choice but to belong to you, to believe in you, and follow you. Keep our ears always leaning into your word and call us again and again that we might live our lives as you would have us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, your call to us as individuals is also a call into the community of believers, your whole Christian church on earth. 
Bind us together in you. Cement us together, not as human organizations of earthly affiliation, but as children of the same Savior, as believers in the same Lord, and as witnesses to the same true gospel word. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, our world is in disarray and mayhem abounds. We lift up to you the people of Ukraine, that you would protect them from the adversity of malignant lusts for power and control. Keep them strong in their resolve. Stir the hearts of Russian soldiers to lay down their weapons at the feet of peace and smother the schemes of him who has lost his way, Vladimir Putin. Grant that peace with freedom and justice should abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, you who know the number of hairs on every head and the sorrow and fear inside every heart, grant that you would heal those we know and love who are sick, who sorrow in grief, or who face adversity of every kind. From your deep well of grace, grant them the assurance of your help, your love, and your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we pray for your whole Christian church on earth, that it should flourish in its witness to your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless LCMC, the Augustana District. St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, Zion Lutheran Church, especially in their transition and in their call process. Bless Faith Lutheran Church and Christ the King as well. Grant us the mercy of your grace and the living power of the Holy Spirit that where we fall short, you would correct us. Where we are weak, you would strengthen us. And where we flourish, you would increase us in our witness and joy. Make us into communities made after the image of your Son. that We might love and care for one another and bear strong witness to the gospel's power in our communities and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, call us and call us again and again open our eyes and leave us without choice but to drop our nets and follow him through whom and in whose name we pray your son the Lord Jesus Christ Amen and Lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.